Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation, and in today's video, we're going to do is an analysis of Frederick Dockers in a huge 70, 78 meter big throw in Rabat, Morocco, just a few days ago. So we wanted to kind of look at the things that make Docker so good and so consistent. Obviously, one of the things that he does, as we talk about in the throwing chain reaction, is he has a very consistent setup. If you look at this throw or any of the throws really throughout the season, you'll notice that the beginning and the start, he's very comfortable with the discus. And he, as he moves himself into position, he kind of goes here with his arm swing. He's going to go what we call as our three position start. He's gonna set up the throw. He's gonna take a long pre-wind, a long wind, and you're gonna notice now, one of the things that we say is a little tricky to understand is when we see a thrower, we're trying to maintain the center line at the start of the throw, and he does do that. You'll see that he has movement here, but you're gonna notice the key thing is when he moves the hips, he creates a ton of separation and stretch reflex between the hips, and that is going to help him create what we refer to as that big pillar two. And so as he creates this shift to the left, again, getting around the left leg is the big key for any thrower, so or the entry side. So we're gonna notice the length of the entry arm. We're gonna notice how the position of the foot is turning ahead. It's past nine o'clock. Um, so one of the things you're gonna to notice too is the weight is forward, how he moves right hip with the left foot. So as he moves into the throw, you're gonna notice that he's really leading and this left side is pulling everything long and into the middle of the circle. He's gonna get an incredibly wide sweep. You're gonna see that high wide sweep leg, knees are out, and you're gonna notice that how high the foot is and how level the foot is at this point. The position of the knee driving, dopping down into the throw, he's really pushing that knee to the sprint point. You're gonna notice that we see the left arm and sweep leg counterbalance. And again, notice the angle of the body and the discus back. This is what we refer to as pillar three. This is where he's applying speed into the throw. And this is where we look at the transition. So now he's gonna start transitioning from the sprint leg to the middle, right, the delivery leg. And so you're gonna notice this is where the rewrap occurs. He's gonna keep the shoulder long and away. You can see the high point of the discus back here. And this is the key, noticing where he loads and lands. He stays on the ball of the foot and that knee from this point is just gonna to continue to be really pushing ahead of the toe throughout the throw. You'll notice that that's another difference when we broke down the Daniel Stahl so consistent and it's that that constant acceleration and lack of hesitation and you're really starting to see this um, with Dockers over the last couple of seasons. Now look at how he stays on the right. You're going to notice he lands on the ball. He's got that high point here. He's got the left arm is really counterbalancing him over the right leg which enables him to keep his chest over the right knee. And so at this point, you're going to see how the knee is going to be moving ahead and watch the elevation of the heel. So you'll see that the knee and you'll see that the hip are going to be driving into the throw and the direction that they're going to be facing. So as he comes down, you'll notice this is what we refer to as pillar four and there's five. We notice the block foot coming flat to the ground, the elevation of the Delivery leg heel, so again, that's the push of the knee and the hip into the throw, and then you're gonna see how he maintains that heel, that foot on the ground pretty through this point, through the delivery, but he'll elevate, whereas Stahl will keep it down even a bit longer. So Frederick keeps the left arm a little wider, and again, but you're gonna notice the contact at the delivery point, both feet are still pretty much on the ground, and look where the hip is facing, the hip is facing into the sector down this way and that pulls the discus forward and that's why you see most elite throwers their release is at this point right you're going to see that right back here he's moving so fast so on this breakdown you're going to see that the hip is ahead and the shoulders ahead and that's what creates the whipping motion of the discus and you can see it's not the motion of throwing this way he's rotating all the way through so that the discus whips around now let's let's go back and this was what they had called um, they had initially called it a foul if you look on the throw it's all pretty clean you can see that there was clearly no foul and obviously the video review showed there was no foul and obviously set a new diamond league record so one of the th key things again just kind of looking at it and we'll look at it in full speed you'll notice again super quick 
and we'll go all the way back to the beginning we'll look at it one more time at full speed so we'll just look at that setup watch the control and the comfort with the discus little swing setup and then you're gonna watch him just takes off and nice and consistent throughout the whole throw constant acceleration and again these are the things that we talk about but here's some of the key points we love the counterbalance point here you're gonna see the the left arm and you're gonna see the sweep leg and they start to work because he's so long here the hip again moving with the left side and you'll notice again that left foot is leading ahead it is not dropping early if you load the foot what a lot of young throwers will do is load around here then they're trying to get on and turn on a loaded axis the key here is to get the foot around and drive into the throw this is where he creates the sprint you'll notice that line especially back here is where you're gonna see the chet the discus is back behind the hip the sweep legs going nice and wide and again this is where in my opinion the throw is really made this is what we refer to as the chain reaction the setup the pillar one two three really enables him to just crush the rest of it now again pillar four five six you have to work all these positions and clearly he's been very disciplined thrower and he and his coach uh, Julian Robinson have done a phenomenal job but the key thing here is he sets up so efficiently and he can enter in the ring so dynamically that when he's going to be landing you're going to see how he's loaded up that knee bend he's got that heel not dropping and again he's able to really accelerate into the throw very dynamic low to the ground through the reverse which is the key you're not seeing a big jump you're seeing everything come through very efficient and this is what people have been kind of talking about for a while he's been hitting 68 meter throws and you can kind of even see his expressions when he come out of the ring he's not entirely doesn't look like he's as happy as he could be and he just looks like he's missing a little bit on some of those 68 meters and here it just looks like he connected a little cleaner through the finish and that's what uh, resulted in a huge PR and uh, world lead so it will be fun to continue to watch him and Daniel Stahl as they compete um, in Diamond League meets f for the summer and, uh, leading up to the World Championships. So it should be a, an absolutely awesome uh, thing to watch. I'm a huge fan. Love this guy's technique, and we use him as a technical model quite often because he does so many things. I think he's around six foot four. Um, he looks even taller. He throws incredibly long. Clearly, he's got a very long wingspan, but he really maximizes his size and his lever, and he's incredibly quick. So a great technical model again, um, but just super clean. Pay really close attention to this position. Notice how the hip is moving with that entry side and the length of the entry arm. So the path is what we talk about is that super long path that's pulling them into the circle. Notice the arm will open and then right here is where you're gonna start to see some rewrap of the shoulder, a little bend at the elbow so that it allows that lower body to move ahead he continues that extremely long path again with that uh, <clears throat> the block side arm as the block comes down look at the extension of the block arm that's going to enable the long path so that that discus can get around and the hips can get ahead of the discus through the delivery again just an awesome throw so just again here at Airtay Throws Nation we're big fans of throwing we can have a huge appreciation for what high level throwers do and again part of the intention on videos like these are to really look at the things that make an, a successful throw not so much critique and, and and give our opinion is regarding what we think can be better and how he can throw further but rather break down what what goes into a nearly a 71 meter throw a 232 foot throw inside a stadium um, so we just want to look at it that and we always say look at the positives we'll look at again there's stylistically there's going to be differences between uh, Frederick and Daniel and uh, Piotr so you know we'll see all those differences but we're gonna look mechanically you're gonna see a lot of the similarities how they're hitting all their key positions and what we refer to as the six pillars throughout the throw so again we hope this is helpful just kind of give you some extra insight what we think is going on or what I think uh, what these guys do so well and what makes them so awesome and so fun to watch it's just a, a, as a huge fan of throwing it's a really cool thing and uh, coaching athletes you could definitely have 
uh, a great appreciation for what these athletes and coaches are accomplishing. So congratulations to Frederick and Coach Robinson, and uh, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, give us, uh, hit the subscribe button, and uh, comment below if you have any other questions or things you'd like to see. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the next video. Be sure to check out our next videos. Be sure to subscribe. Visit our website for free videos. Click the links below. We have links to our free mini course. Check out our websites for camps and different detailed information. Throw farther faster by understanding the science with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. Thanks so much for watching.